guys, welcome back to another interview with Yona Mac Media. We are here with David David Blair, sorry. How's it going? I'm very well, thanks. Yourself? Yes, not bad, not bad. Nice to be in sunny Glasgow for a change. It is sunny in Glasgow <laughs> and that is for a change, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Must have brought it with me. Is it nice out the East Coast then? Ah, it's not too bad, not too bad. Good. After the rainy fringe, but yeah. It's been a, yeah, wettest festival season, I'd say, so far. <laughs> definitely, definitely, but it kind of adds to the atmosphere, I suppose. For the ones that haven't been cancelled, eh? <laughs> Mini Glastonbury, that's uh, what we'll call it. Um, so tell us about your events that you're planning, the Musicians Against Homelessness. Yes, um, I was asked by Stumpy Hanvey from um, MFN Events, worked with Stumpy before in the past, uh, puts on a lot of really good gigs. Last year he was involved with the Musicians Against Homelessness charity. Okay. Uh, patron of that is, is Alan McGee, who used to manage Oasis, now manages wow. Black Grape and Cast, amongst some other acts. And Stumpy asked me if I would like to get involved and, and organise a couple of the gigs this year. So I live in Glasgow, I put on a monthly Yellow Movement Friday night on in Edinburgh, and yeah, I decided uh, to, to get on board with it. and. Uh-huh start uh, contacting around my pals and stuff like that that are in bands and see who wants to get involved so we're we're moving forward now um the first one is going to be friday the 15th of september in stramash and uh, on the cowgate in edinburgh we've got the the stage from seven to three and we've got uh, at the moment kieran fisher um, great singer songwriter from Iowa. Um, we've got Loki, one of the best rappers around at the moment. Yeah. Um, we've got Mickey Nines, amazing live band as well that we've played with quite a lot with Colonel Mustard and the Dijon Five. Mm-hmm. Uh, Seabass Kid Heard from off, yeah. out in the East Coast, um, Scariachi, <laughs> uh, another amazing band. Uh, we we were both down playing at Boomtown Fair. They were recently as well, went along, watched them. They, they had a brilliant big stage, brilliant slot on the Friday night. Uh, they're really good. Uh, have Mercy Las Vegas, okay. who are you know, like a sort of country Americana with a Scottish twist um, band. Uh, really great, great energy from them live as well. And they were one of the, the five bands that uh, played the Yellowland gig when we were all in together. Uh, filled out the, the bar is the Bar on Ballroom. Wow. Which this deal. interview just now we're not far from. Uh, that was the fifth of March last year. And we've got the the Twistettes who were also on that Yellowland lineup uh too, who are probably just for me the best punk band yeah. uh, in Scotland. Um two sisters, Joe and Nikki, bass drums, vocal. Um they're a force of nature and, and yeah. a very, very loud band. Um we've got them playing as well. So that that's the Friday night. Um We've got Darren Connell, who's got the the Darren Connell show. Um, okay. he's, a, he's a great Scottish comedian. Uh, he's an actor in the BBC sit- sc- sitcom Scott Squad. Oh, um, okay. He's doing some comparing, and we've also got Suki Good Good Fellow, who's had a wee run uh, show at the Fringe. She's also doing some comparing for us in Edinburgh. Uh, so that's the Friday wow. night. So it's a whole mixture stuff that's like even like genres when it comes to music yes yeah uh, i feel that's the best thing to do like even like the monthly yellow movement nights that, that we put on um and even sort of like the yellow movement itself really is is a, just a, a wider community of friends and pals who are mu- who happen to be musicians and yeah. and artists and doing spoken word and poetry and, and all that kind of thing um art is art and i think you can get too hung up and putting particular labels Aye. On certain things, and and I think when when you put labels on certain things, then it kind of automatically creates a division of sorts. Aye. aye. Uh, and 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 how we sort of describe the yellow movement is it's a creative community, bringing people together in peace, love, and music, or art, or culture, yeah. or whatever that might be. So we we don't really myself personally, I don't really look, look at or decide on picking a lineup and think right, I need to. I need to only have 90s Britpop type yeah, bands yeah. or I need to just have electronica or whatever mm-hmm. that might be. Um, I've got a very sort of eclectic and wide taste in music myself, right from some country to rap to classical to uh, indie and electronica and sort of everything in between. So I think if you are a true musician, you do broaden your horizons and appreciate every type of music. 
Yeah, definitely. Since since I've been involved in music, I, I have certainly found um, my my respect and, and and admiration for just anybody trying to yeah. make a go doing music. Uh, it's 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 not easy, uh, yeah. and there's a lot of sacrifices along the way. So. I doff my <laughs> I doff my cap to everybody involved in music, and that's playing the music and behind the scenes making things happen. All the there's a lot of work goes on goes on behind the scenes, just administration and like yeah. planning and logistics and promoting gigs and stuff like that as well, and gambling almost like when when you're putting on a gig. Um, I don't think a lot of people actually realise what goes on behind the scenes. Like when yes. it comes to organising events. Yeah, I would agree. And then I'll, I'll hold my hands up. It's, it's like anything. Until you're really at the coal face or something, then you don't appreciate yeah. all the work that has to go in and the activity and the mechanics of how something works. Uh -huh. So, at the end, well, we... The whole sort of music scene and, and the wider music community, it's, it's such a... There's, there's such a positive symbiotic relationship that has to exist between those who come and watch people play music and uh -huh. those who are making music yeah. for people to come and watch them. Um, they, I mean, you you can just make music for yourself in your home. Aye. Um, personally, that's not something that I would like to see any of the people that I know that make music do because well, for me, music is music's something that's got to be shared. Yeah. Um, yeah. But if if that's your thing and you want to get out and you have the confidence, or you're wanting to build up the confidence, uh -huh. playing live to go out and share your music with with the world, then um, ultimately, if you're wanting to make a living from it, then yeah. you need people to come along and watch it. So um, there's definitely it's, it's it's a two way sort of virtuous circle of one supporting the other. Yeah. And what would you say to any like up and coming musicians? Uh, get out there and 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 do your thing. Um, the the I've I've been down in Liverpool like the last few weeks. I've I've got family down there, and I'm just back up the road uh, after spending a week down there with um, the they used to be the KLF, they're now called the Justified Ancients of Moo Moo, they came back after 23 years, there's a whole sort of counterculture movement oh, right. around them with places like Festival 23 down in um, the Midlands and you know, like Greg Wilson putting on his super weird happenings and stuff like that in Liverpool and um, yeah, there's been a there's been a, a, a grown counterculture like, around um particular themes and really just coming out of the arts and, and culture itself yeah. uh, when I was down at Liverpool for the the 14 hour super weird happening which was uh, an, an event put on by the DJ Greg Wilson as a 50th anniversary of when the first um, sort of super weird happening happened in 1967 during oh, right, the original okay. summer of love in London and Alexandra Palace and that was all the sort of main, again, counterculture people and like the Beatles and stuff like that were there. Uh, and it was all to get together with like-minded people, finding the others, sharing ideas, yeah. inspiring more creativity to come from that. So Alan Moore was one of the guest speakers at the, the event down in Liverpool that I went to. And he he's the man behind he he created v for vendetta and oh, right, okay. watchtower and he's done a lot of other amazing stuff he's wow. he's one of the greatest writers of all time yeah. uh, undeniably and um he was asked just for like what one piece of advice would you give to um artists looking to get started and our musicians looking to get started and, and and his advice was very simple um where there is no culture you have to create some Definitely, yeah. So if you feel that creative spark within yourself, in some way you need to get that out and, and share it. And well, ourselves as a band, um, we, we are still an unsigned band. Uh, we don't have a label. Um, we don't have any management that we're answerable to or anything for that. Yeah. But yet we've... You seem um, to be doing a, a lot, though. Yeah, we, we, we do do a lot. We, we're, we're a busy band. I mean, we put yeah. a lot of work and time and effort into to getting ourselves out there and, and, and playing for the 60s on as we call them everyone that comes along to watch us because yeah. we love having a party uh, and we love having a good time with, with yeah. all, all of our friends and families um, and we always say that sort of like the 60s on they bring the party mm -hmm. and we play the soundtrack but um, 
a lot of the tools are out there nowadays, especially like with the internet. Like you yeah. can go and you can create your own YouTube channel and start sharing, just filming yourself playing like, on your mobile phone. Like you, yeah. you, you don't need a lot nowadays. No, definitely um, not. To share your art with people. Yeah. And social media, like anything, can be used positively or negatively. Uh, uh-huh. And li- and like anything. Um, Y- you have to sort of strike that balance and find that fine line between using things in moderation and not yeah, yeah. overusing them to the point where like, you end up sometimes myself or I'll, <laughs> I'll be critical of myself for it like, yeah you're just you're on social media a lot of the time Aye. but um as a as a as a band and as a promoter that's that's where the conversations Aye. exist a lot of the time so if you're not on there um, getting your message out, then it can be missed by a lot of people. So sometimes it's a lot easier using Facebook to create an event rather than like using flyers, because a lot more people see it on Facebook. Yep, yeah, well, I suppose it it depends how you target it and, yeah. and who you're looking to to target target mm-hmm. it to. Um, but yeah, the 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 tools, the tool, a lot of the tools, if not most of the tools nowadays, are are at our fingertips. Yeah. And there's apps for almost everything, and with the amount of stuff that you can do just through your mobile phone nowadays, uh, it is staggering. But the key thing is, uh, if you're a musician and you're wanting to get out there and start playing, then you you do need to get out and start meeting up with like-minded people yeah. and going along to events that interest you. With maybe there's bands that you might think you you're you're a good fit with, and uh-huh. just just go along and support your local music scene as well. Yeah. Like, Make make sure you're getting out there, and like we, for those who play music, we're all music fans as well. Uh-huh. So yeah. when you're getting out there and, and helping and supporting your local music scene, then there's a nice karma to that, which uh-huh. should hopefully come back and, and help yourself. I think there's a lot of, so much positive people doing music in Scotland right now, like the Scottish scene, like music scene in itself. It just seems to be growing and growing. Yeah, it is. Um, I mean, I've been involved in it now, sort of directly with, with Colonel Mustard and the Dijon Five and the Yellow Movement since you know, like 2012, 2013. Oh, right, okay. um, and in all the time that I've been a music fan, like, having been going to gigs since I was like, 16 or whatever, uh, I've, I've never known the Scottish music scene to be so good. Yeah. Uh, there is just so many talented people doing their thing at the moment and... It's, it's quite humbling like, just to know that so many of them that I've now had the pleasure of getting to know like, yeah. and, and can call a lot of them friends and, as well. And um, I think even more so when um, like, myself, myself with my, my role within Colonel Merson and Dijon 5, like, I, I don't play any of the recorded music that's on any of our yeah. stuff. Like, I'm basically the mustard bez, <laughs> uh, the percussionist, and I go out and do a bit of crowd surfing and, and a bit of break dancing <laughs> during dance-off and that kind of thing. So I'm more or less like a hype man on Aye. and off the stage, um, help get the party going. <laughs> uh, keep Everybody it going. needs somebody like you. Yeah, yeah, well, that's, that, that's fair enough. And um, and for me, but to see so many talented people, I, I just I really feel it's incumbent upon me sort of like using the platform that I have um, yeah. to to shout about how good the uh-huh. music scene is and, and let people know that this night's on, go along to that, you're going to see, going to see some great acts yeah. and sharing the music of, of my friends um, and and just sharing the music that, that I love because the mm-hmm. the power of the internet is such as that we, we have instantaneous communication with so many people. Yeah. Uh, and again, it's like, what do you want to to use that ability uh-huh. for? And uh, for me, it's it's really just to try and help the music scene thrive. Yeah. So talk to us about Colonel Mustard and the Dijon Five. Where did the name come from? Because the first time I seen you guys, I was like, what? Yeah, <laughs> it's it's a name that once heard isn't quickly forgotten. Um, yeah. <laughs> the, there's a few stories sort of like bounce around. Um, for most of us in the band, our favourite band is the Beatles. Uh-huh. So it's a little bit of a play on words and a, again another sort of doffing of the cap <laughs> to Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Okay. Sergeant Colonel Pepper Mustard. Yeah. Uh, th- there is that. Um, the, the the story behind the name goes all the way back to, to 1997 when the Colonel, or 
John McAlinden, as he was just known then. Uh, we've been pals since we were five. We started oh, primary right. one together, so we've we've got a, a, a long a long standing relationship. Yeah. And um, he he was down at Glastonbury. He was up at the Stone Circle, and there's a lot of interesting characters up yeah. at the Stone Circle in Glastonbury. I was just chatting away with this guy, and he, he just kind uh, of blurted out if I ever had a band, I would call them Colonel Mustard and the Dijon Five. <laughs> so John remembered that, um, yeah. and then when his previous band, the Ping Pong Banana Show, which also had a, a yellow theme <laughs> in it, uh, disbanded. It was then, right, let's, let's create Colonel yeah. Mustard and the Dijon Five. It is a brilliant and name, like you say. Once you've heard it, you yeah, won't Yeah, it's, it. it's a great name. It's a great name. And um, aye, it just it just sums us up perfectly <laughs> or imperfectly, considering <laughs> there are not five Dijons, and that's that, that has yeah. grown over the years. Um, so talk to us about the Yellow Movement. What is the Yellow Movement? The the yellow movement it kind of began really as as a bit of a joke. Um, we we were playing a gig with Mickey Nines, uh, who's frontman, Saint Cool, uh, good pal Dougie. Mm-hmm. He he was wearing yellow and a mask, <coughs> and we had recently been out and and bought our first T-shirts that we were bringing along to sell, oh, which right. of course were yellow. Yeah. So um, T-shirts sold well. We got more sold more t-shirts and then we were at a festival um i can't remember where but one of the the six dijon legends colin venters okay. who we when we done our album pledge through pledge music for our debut album which came out in may 2014 um one of the top pledges was to have a private gig anywhere of your choice so oh, colin okay. venters was one of the guys one of the people who bought the top pledge and we played his retirement doing the flying duck all right which is where i'm going tonight for um the break even scottish hip-hop night hosted by futurology um and in the flying duck uh we, we played colin's retirement do and then he was at pretty much most of all all of our gigs yeah. or most of them anyway from sort of like those early days when he after they found out about us mm-hmm. so we were at a festival and Wherever it was that we were playing, everybody was sort of coming over the brow of the hill to come and watch us. And went, geez, oh, it's like a yelly movement. <laughs> uh, and and it and it was right. It was just it yeah. was really it was amazing to just see all these people <laughs> coming over and yell yeah. uh, to come and have a party with us. Um, and then just kind of from that, the two words were in the idea space, as Alan yeah. Moore likes to call it. Like they were they were out there. They became a part of the. The collective consciousness. Uh-huh. Um, then I was up at the Colonel's one night, and he was, oh, what, what do you think of this? And he had sort of like, written down the um, most of the sort of the the Yellow Movement manifesto uh-huh. that that we've now got, and had a couple of suggestions and a few wee bits and pieces here and there that that I added in, and uh, and then that became just the manifesto yeah. that, that we wrote for it. And um, again, like there wasn't anything too serious to it at that point but then more bands became a part of it, it, it yeah. then sort of grew out and it expanded sort of the the the, the sort of founding members if you will of it like the mickey nines ourselves mm-hmm. gyro babies the twistettes jamie and shuni and and then it, it expanded then outside of just being within glasgow when jamie and shuni came on board in edinburgh yeah. and now it's grown and we've got bands from what south korea who have been over wow. and played yellow movement nights here to us introducing that as a a, yeah. a, a concept to them out there and mm-hmm. and we get pictures from people wearing their t-shirts all around the world now wow. from the amazon to alaska <laughs> to australia and new zealand and wow. out to hobbiton the, the lord of the ring set in new zealand and, and everywhere in between and it's it really has grown and, yeah, and it's definitely. it's, it's People, people love spreading the mustard now as well, <laughs> which is always a good thing. Definitely, definitely. Um, talk to us about the other gigs. Is it three gigs that you've got all together? So, uh, well, I, I'm I'm organising two musicians against homelessness gigs. Mm. So, we've talked about the Edinburgh one. Yeah. The Glasgow one uh, is on. Should meet Saturday the sixteenth of September. And that's in the Dry Gate. Okay. Uh, just next to the Tenants Factory, um, outside of the Merchant City, just heading out towards the East End of the city uh it's on from seven to one uh we've got um a couple of dj sets that will be on sort of between the bands playing from 
bunch of junglist who's a good friend of ours called James Windybank. Uh, he runs JFW events. He's came in and helped right. uh, Colonel Mercer and Dijon Five with production before. Uh, our academy gig and, and other gigs for other bands like yeah. Dead Man Fall. We have Dead Man Fall also playing it. who are a brilliant band that Colonel and I used to go to school with. Uh, they supported us as well. Uh, they were All one right. of our special guests at the academy gig back in May that we played with um, uh, Scottish Sky Legends, Esperanza as well. They were along for that. So we've got uh, Dead Man Fall. We've got Joe Dark from the Twist Edge. She's doing a solo set. We've got another brilliant band called The Hollows. Uh, we have Fita Clay from Coat Bridge, or another brilliant band that we played with multiple times. They've also played with us. They, they, they've they played the Barras as well. Um, we have uh, Dope Sick Fly, who are just an amazing sort of rap, funk, uh, heard of them, yeah. jazz, soul fusion. Um, and um, I think we're going to be adding another act to the lineup. So the the tickets are ten pounds plus booking fee. They're available yeah. from Skiddle via the event. Both of the events are Musicians Against Homelessness, mm -hmm. Stramash Edinburgh, and Musicians Against Homelessness, Drygate, Glasgow. Yeah. Um, and the all profits are going to from the ticket sales and on the door uh, are going to the the UK homeless charity Crisis. Okay. Yeah. And um, we're also bringing in a couple of local homeless charity partners. So in Glasgow, we're partnering up with Simon Community Scotland. Mm -hmm. They'll be inside the venue just doing a bit of collection on the night. Yeah. And we've also got Street Work through in Edinburgh, who will be in right. uh, the Stramash venue, yeah. getting involved with that. There's a little um, warm-up party also happening, which is our Yellow Movement Sundays in McCool's in Glasgow. Okay. Uh, the first Sunday of next month, uh, that's that's returning, and that's at a wee break for festival season. Mm -hmm. And we've got um, a few people playing at that, and a secret poet, um, a couple of the lads from Dope Sick Fly, yeah. uh, and some others as well. So Yellow Movement Sundays, that's that's on Facebook if you want. You're have pretty busy, that. to be fair. Yeah, yeah, we 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 always have a lot going on, yeah. uh, which is good. What about musical influences for yourself? Well, um, I've got, as I said, I've got quite an, an eclectic taste in music, but um, my, my favourite band is and always will be the Beatles. Yeah. Um, um, I love everything they stood for musically. Um, their tunes are just they're, they're yeah. brilliant as well. And um, even like, after the Beatles split up as well, like what they what they all went on to do yeah. um, individually as well, um, particularly like John Lennon and, and George Harrison as well massive fan of, of what they did after that and um McCartney had his moments <laughs> as well. Uh Wings Band on the Run is, is undeniably a brilliant album. Yeah. Uh, as Alan Partridge once said, only Wings only the band the Beatles could have become. <laughs> so um yeah the, the the Beatles are the the biggest influence on me. I've got a few oh. Beatles tattoos around my body. Um but just I I, t I take a lot of influences from from a lot of bands. Um yeah. Um, bands like Public Enemy and Rage Against the Machine oh, coming right, through okay. in the 90s sort of really politically wo woke me up as well yeah. to um, injustice in the world and that kind of thing and uh -huh. sort of channeling that energy um, so they do it through their music as well as, yeah. as well as as well as putting a message out to people that it's um, it's important to to sort of like be an activist uh, and, and be aware of what's going on in the world yeah. and also your place within it and what you can do uh, to try and affect positive change because uh -huh. I think the the system and the establishment they they would link to perpetuate the myth that yeah. we as just an individuals we, 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 we can't change things um, but really, it's only ever been the people that, that yeah. have demanded and, and changed things, uh, whether that is people what sort of link within government or just uh, society um, as a whole. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. I thank you. I will see you at Stramash in Edinburgh. Excellent. Get some backstage interviews going. Yes, we'll, do, we'll get that organised. Yeah, awesome. Thank we'll you very much there. for your time, David. Thanks, Ayanna. Take care. Thank you. <laughs> Oh,